Hi, this is Amir from FinQuest Institute. In this video, we'll understand the concept of a stock price random walk. A very important concept which we require for asset price modeling. This is a frequently used concept when we talk of Monte Carlo simulations. So that simulation could be used for option pricing or it could be used for value at risk. So these are just a couple of applications, but, uh, but this is an extensively used model in the industry. So let's try to understand how exactly we can simulate the price for a certain equity stock. So we look at a simple equation here. This is also called as a SDE or a stochastic differential equation. So let's split this equation into two parts. So the part which is highlighted in blue is what we call as the deterministic portion. And the part which is highlighted in red is what we call as the stochastic or the random portion. So let's try to slice and dice this equation and understand what these components are so that we have a full view as to how the how a asset price gets simulated. So going through the terms which are mentioned in this equation, R is the risk free rate, S is the current stock price dt is a very small time increment so we are going to talk about time increments in a bit sigma is the volatility again this is the same s which is the stock price and dw this is what we call as the geometric brownian motion so the first portion why we call it as deterministic because all of the terms here are known why do i say that because risk free rate is known and that is visible in the market Stock price I know, I know the stock price as of right now. So that way stock price is also known quantity. And DT is a time step. So this time step is something which I'm going to decide what will be. So based on my model, I'm going to decide a very, a certain time step DT. So there is no uncertainty as to this portion. So that's the reason why it's also called as a deterministic portion. Now coming to the second part, which we call as the stochastic part. So the first two terms, volatility which we call as sigma this can be known and constant we can be assume we can assume that to be constant or have it time dependent but again uh, there is no randomness as such in that we have the same stock price so we know the current stock price and this term dw this is what we call as the gbm or geometric brownian motion so this is a concept which we borrow from the field of physics and we use it in finance so this was first used for studying the movement of dust particles in space. So from that, we use the same logic for modeling of stock prices as well. So in order to have a closer look at this DW, let me discretize this equation. Oh, sorry, I'll just discretize this term DW. I represent DW as phi root DT. So phi is defined as a random number which is drawn from a certain distribution. And root t, or root of delta t, this is nothing but a square root of my time step. So the random number, now why I require random numbers is because I need to have the randomness which is inherent in any asset behavior. Now, why that random component is important? Because no investor or no trader can know for sure where the stock price is going to end at a certain point in time. So let's say I'm uh, looking to forecast what the stock price is going to be three months down the line for a certain equity stock. Now, if I can pinpoint that stock price and I can get the exact value, then I'll be a millionaire in no time. But that is not possible. No one can know exactly how an asset is going to behave and what would be the price at a certain maturity. So in our case, three months. So for that, we require a certain component of randomness to be included. And whenever we talk of randomness, there are probabilities associated with it. So here as well, we take a certain underlying probability distribution and we use that distribution to draw these numbers, which we call as phi. So, phi, so for every random number which we draw from a distribution, that is going to generate one small increment in the stock price. So if you look closely at the equation which I have written, on the left hand side, I have a term called as DS. So I know S is the stock price which I am interested in modeling. So in, in that end, 
I want to model small increments in stock prices because I don't I can't really model the entire path in one go. I mean, there are approaches to that, but that's not the problem at hand. I want to simulate the entire stock price starting from today after, up till my maturity of let's say three months. And I'm going to do that in small time increments of DT. I'll take it very, very small so that the assumptions of geometric Brownian motion. So there's a concept called as a Wiener process, something which we'll discuss in one of our subsequent videos. So based on that concept of Wiener process and the geometric Brownian bits, we are going to take a very, very small time step. And for every small time step, I'm going to generate a value of DS. So that way, if I can combine all of these small time steps together. So the idea is if capital T is my total time to maturity, then capital time will be a summation of I equal to one to N of DT of I. So every small time step DT, which I calculate, if I sum all of these increments together, I have the total time to expiry for my option or for my asset price path. So this is what we are going to do. So after running this equation, we would be simulating something like this. So imagine this is my starting point. And let's say this is my expiry or maturity, which is three months. So let's say this is my current stock price. Let's call that as S0. So using this equation, let's say I have derived one asset price path. We'll slice and dice and understand this path as well. So as I mentioned earlier, for deriving this asset price path, I'm going to require small increments. So let me divide this into small portions. And uh, so you see these, uh, these red lines which I've drawn, which are basically dividing this asset price path into multiple small bits. So this difference between them is going to be DT. So this is the small time step which I'm looking at. And the quantum which is getting modeled here on the green colored section, this you can imagine as the DS. So that way my stock price bits I'm building over small portions of time and that's how I'm reaching from today until maturity over very, very small time steps. So this is one realization of the asset price path. So when we talk of simulations, we are interested in multiple paths because uh, whenever you work on simulations, the idea is to capture as many plausible scenarios which a stock price can take over today and maturity. So similar to this, I'm going to use this equation again and again. So I may have say a path number two, then I can have maybe say a path number three. So that way I can have a path one, path two and n number of paths. Now how many paths are to be done? That's a different question. So that will be dependent upon how many simulations we want as a part of our exercise. But doing this approach, we can build a simulation for an asset price path. And then we can use these simulated prices for various applications in finance. So this was a very brief video on the concept of a stock price random walk. So to know more about such interesting concepts, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also do visit our website www.finquestinstitute.com to know more about our courses. Thank you.